I'm Pete Zielinski with Modern Machine Shop Magazine, and I'm here with Dr. Julia Shoup, machining expert with TechSolve. And we're going to talk about chip breakers. Chip breakers, the, these ornate designs that they put on your inserts. The issue is not chip breaker or no chip breaker, it's more nuanced than that, isn't it? Yeah, Pete, I think that chip breakers are a really confusing kind of topic when it comes to selecting the right cutting tool because they all sort of look the same. There's a lot of designs, like you said, they're very ornate. A lot of this ornamentation doesn't really have any functional effect. And I'm hoping today we can actually get some real data, we can take some real test cuts and cut through some of that maybe hype, maybe confusion, and, and get some real science that helps us pick the right chip breaker for the right kind of cut. All right, so let's try that. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a finishing pass. I'm turning 4140 steel. Here's my finishing pass, and I'm using an insert with a chip breaker, but I am not breaking chips. What's going on here? Yeah, so that's the, the age-old problem. If you think you picked the right tool, you've got a chip breaker, and you're just not breaking the chip. And that is because this chip breaker is not necessarily a bad chip breaker. It's just the wrong chip breaker. It's just not the right chip breaker for this particular cut. It's probably going to do very well on roughing it. All right, so what I'm kind of hearing you say is my, my parameters just aren't right for this tool. So, so let's get more aggressive. So here's increased feed rate, increased depth of cut. <sighs> Dude, I'm still not breaking chips. What, what's happening? Well, we're still not in the zone that this chip, chip breaker was designed for. We need a certain depth of cut, we need a certain kind of feed before this chip break breaker can actually function. Anything underneath that critical feed and depth of cut is just going to lead to the chip sliding over the chip breaker and it acting as if there wasn't a chip breaker at all. All right, then let's get into the zone. Here is even more feed rate, even more depth of cut. And it's breaking chips now but I'm no longer doing that finishing pass that I wanted to do. What do I need to do to finish and break chips? We saw that a roughing tool just isn't the right tool. You need to go to a finishing tool. And this might sound trivial, but I think it's oftentimes very difficult to know what type of chip breaker you're looking at. So a huge resource for this type of thing is the information that's provided in the manufacturer's catalogs. You can look at the different type of chip breakers, you can look at their application ranges, and let's go ahead and pick a tool that actually has a finishing chip breaker. I think we're gonna see a big difference. And here it is in that finishing pass. A and we can turn that around. Let's use it in roughing and see, we'll see what happens. So here is a tool with no chip breaker whatsoever. Here is that finishing chip breaker we just found, but used in a roughing cut. And here is roughing with a roughing chip breaker. I guess one thing I see is they're all kind of breaking the chip. Absolutely, and roughing it is much easier to break the chip. The thicker chip is easier to kind of bend and break. The big difference is that the chip breaker geometry still has an effect on the cut. We're talking about more positive and negative geometries. The positive geometry is more like kind of pushing a chisel over a surface, and that type of cutting action actually leads to chatter if you have any type of weakness in your system. And it seems like in this particular cut, we just didn't have the rigidity to have that positive a geometry and still take a smooth cut. So what have we learned here? How should we think about chip breakers? There are many different types of chip breakers, and they're really not all created equal. Certain chip breakers excel at roughing, certain chip breakers excel at finishing, but you need to pick the right chip breaker, and you need to really do some digging, look into the information the manufacturer provides, and pick the right chip breaker to make sure that you're taking the best possible cut and have the most effective process possible.